so we just arrived in Dublin this morning, really early this morning. Thankfully we were able to stop off at our friend's place and rest for a couple of hours, but now we are exploring a little bit and we've made our way to Trinity College. We don't know that much about it, but we do know that it's apparently the oldest college in Ireland. It was founded in the 1500s sometime. And a lot of famous, especially famous Irish writers, uh, went to school here, so people like Bram Stoker and Oscar Wilde. So anyway, I'm going to give you a little spin around. These are just different buildings in this like, main quad area. The cool thing is this entire area is um, free to go into. You can pay to get a tour, but you're also free to just kind of wander around on your own. So we're just sitting here in the Dublin Castle Garden, which is a nice little respite in the middle of the city. Um, and we've just learned that this tower over here, which is part of the castle, is where they used to keep prisoners, but also where they used to keep the crown jewels until the crown jewels got stolen. In 1907. In 1907, apparently, the crown jewels got stolen. Yeah, so apparently the crown jewels got stolen in 1907, but they've never been recovered. And we were just talking about... Yeah, they're out there somewhere. They're out there somewhere, and <laughs> they could be anywhere. They, right. could, they could be under us right now. But also, how... What do you do if you've stolen the crown jewels of Ireland? Because it's not like you can sell them to anyone. And right. it's not like you can show them off to anyone. It's like, do you just keep them forever for your own pride? Yeah, you have the satisfaction of knowing... That you have the crown jewels. That you are the proud owner of the crown jewels. Maybe someone has the crown jewels and doesn't know it. That'd be the other thing. That's such a good point. I don't know. Are there yet? I guess maybe if they get like chopped up into pieces and... Even if they're not chopped up, I don't know. They're just in someone's, uh, the bottom so think, of someone's drawer. <laughs> so you think someone right now has like a chest that's like got... Well, I don't know how big the crown jewels are. I mean... I'm sure they're Point for I'm further sure they're research. Very impressive. Point for further research. So we are just about to get going on our second day in Dublin. Um, we slept in a little bit later than expected this morning, and by a little bit I mean a crap ton later. Um, but I guess we really needed it, and it's good to get over jet lag as fast as possible so that we'll be good to go for the rest of the time. We've just been absolutely spoiled by how beautiful the weather's been just in our short couple of days here. We know that it's often really rainy and overcast and we've had nothing but sunshine so hoping that holds out the rest of today the plan is to go back downtown do some museums maybe take a walk through um, st stephen's square we will let you know what we get we're just walking through the grafton street shopping district on our way to the national gallery there's lots of people around here and lots of touristy things but it's also pretty cool a lot of fun energy Not really much to see because now it's part of the American University of Dublin, so there's just a plaque on the outside of the wall. You can see a little bit of it. I zoom in. There you go. But there you have it. House of Oscar Wilde. We're trying to be quiet because we're in an art gallery, but we're also playing a fun game called What Do You Think This Painting Is About? Or of Jonathan, your thoughts on the Roscoe? About the layering of colors, obviously. The of colors. Yeah, Why black? Sorry. Why red? That's the whole point. The point is why? Yes. Mm. The point is why. Inception happening right here. Jonathan taking a picture of a picture. Oh, thank you. The classic Monet. So the National Gallery was a success. And now we are walking to the Chester Beatty Library where there's supposed to be a lot of cool, very old, like illuminated manuscripts and religious documents and things like that. So far we have learned that Chester Beatty was an Irish man who traveled around, especially in East Asia, and collected slash possibly stole items that have now been collected here. This is one of his favorite things to collect, which are 
snuff bottles. And snuff, if you did not know, is powdered tobacco mixed with spices that you snort. I think our favorite one here is the one that's shaped like the tiny cob of corn. What a way to disguise your snuff. Not where to pull out a miniature ear of corn from your bag. Look at how beautiful these illuminated texts are. These are very, very old copies of the Quran from the mid 15th century, I guess. Um, that came from Cairo. You can't even quite tell in the video, but the gold on them is still so bright. I'm not sure if they've had some sort of restoration done, but. Okay, look at how cool this is. This is a book from Japan that was printed in 1801. That is a collection completely of 36 immortal women poets. So now we're in St. Stephen's Green having a little bit of a coffee and a donut break. Um, we're pretty excited about this. These donuts look epic. Let me show you mine. I've gone for the lemon curd donut because I'm kind of a sucker for anything lemony. What have you gone for? The uh, banoffee. Oh, banoffee. Yes. Banana <laughs> thing that we seem to not have. Yeah. You can see everyone in Dublin seems to have had the same idea of what to do today because the weather continues to be exceptionally perfect. So we are going to enjoy these and have a relax.